for soul. Hey everyone, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, before we get started, if you could go ahead and like and subscribe because, you know, you want to. Today's sunglass that we're going to review is the Prosol PO3165 Calligrapher Editions. They're nice and fancy. These are a very interesting pair of sunglasses, if you ask me. Especially if you look at kind of the history of the way the Prosols are made. It looks at that history and says, yeah, okay, but what if we didn't? We're still paying a lot of respect to the history of Prosol before it, but not exactly being beholden to it. See, what Prosol likes to do is they like to release a kind of a new flagship model for that year. And each year it kind of has a different name. Going back to 2014, you had the release of the typewriter collection, followed by 2015, the release of the seller collection. And then with 2016, I believe, that's whenever you got the uh, 8649s, and then after that in 2017, they actually released uh, two big flagship models, starting with the uh, calligraphers and then following up later that year with the 7649s. So in that amount of time, these just kind of stand out. There's something very different. I mean, sure you can draw parallels from these to the uh, typewriters, but even then they're not like a direct comparison. They're, it's a unique shape to really anything else that uh, Priscilla has done before or after to the best of my knowledge. I mean, I think they did a collection in 2013 that used some of the same elements, but this is very different. They, uh, it does feel like an evolution of the typewriters. And I guess that that's why they call it the calligraphers because the typewriters were a bit more, you know, rigid and a bit more organic in design and took a lot of inspiration from an actual typewriter. And these are the calligraphers and can kind of feel kind of the flowiness through the whole design from it. Some of the dimensions of this frame, this is a 50 millimeter lens with a 22 millimeter bridge. And uh, I believe that they do make a slightly larger one of a 52 millimeter lens. I really haven't spent a lot of time with that, so I'm not gonna comment on it. So a 50 millimeter lens isn't necessarily a big lens for kind of any model. Um, as you can see right here, uh, with the 22 millimeter bridge, it kind of sits a little further out, so it doesn't feel like it's shrunken onto my face. The lenses sit nice and far enough apart where I have kind of a perfect view out of them. And the lenses are tall enough where I'm not really getting any sun from above or below. It's kind of a very perfect uh, height for lens without looking like too small or really too big. It doesn't look like an aviator trying to droop down. And this particular model is the black frame with the green G15 lenses in them. And of course, they're Prusol's polarized anti-reflective crystal glass lenses, meaning they're really, really clear. I mean, I know I talk a lot about lens clarity, but trust me, it's just really hard to beat the clarity of a glass lens. And these are no exception. You expect a Prusol glass lens that's polarized anti-reflective to be extremely clear and guess what these are but with that said they do have all the advantages of a Prusol crystal glass lens but they also have some of the disadvantages see i've noticed that Prusol lenses are really hard to get clean i mean they're easy to wipe off and get clean but the problem is to get them like truly deep cleaned without any kind of uh, surface streaks or anything like that, it's really hard to do with Prusols. And these really aren't an exception. I mean, it is just kind of a price you have to pay with uh, really great Prusol lenses. What I recommend is making sure your lens cloth is as clean as possible and putting just a little bit of heat on the lens, like with a hair dryer or what I often do is just kind of breathe on the lens and then immediately spray it. You don't want to get the lenses too hot, but you know, a little heat kind of helps open up the pores in the glass. So that's just some knowledge for you to take home. You're welcome. What do I really mean whenever I say this frame really kind of scoffed and played with tradition? See, it was around this era and Prisol's design that were they doing a lot of experiments with metal. Uh, most notably before it was the 8649, which was a more of a metal adaptation of the uh, 649 model but it still had a lot of acetate to it. They just could see more metal kind of seeping in. And it still had the Prusol Meflecto system. A quick refresher about what the Meflecto is, it's Prusol's patented ear sock design where it runs metal rods through the acetate temple to allow it to flex out. And it allows for a more comfortable fit. And this has to be done with metal rods through the acetate to allow it to flex right there. And again, this just allows for a very comfortable fit. It's just one of the hallmarks of Prusol, and it's something that only Prusol can do. You can never see a Meflecto system 
on something else despite how much something else really wants to do it. Only Persol can do it. So that's why I was a little caught off guard and actually a little insulted as a Persol fan when they came out with this with no Meflecto system at all. I mean, they still make reference to the Meflecto systems with the two little uh, lines right there kind of acting as a mimic Meflecto system, but they don't do it. See, as you can see here, they flex much higher in the frame, whereas if it was an actual Meflecto, it would kind of flex right there. So uh, I'm not going to lie, I kind of didn't like that as soon as I saw them as a kind of a pre-sold traditionalist. Whenever I saw that, initially I go, you're making a big mistake, Persol. But, like most of the time, whenever Persol releases a new collection, I don't like it for the first six weeks, and then I immediately fall in love with it, and I have to have it. But I do have to say, uh, and I'll get into some of the other reasons why later, this is maybe the most comfortable Persol around. And it doesn't have the Meflecto system, so it's kind of bizarre for me to be like, mad that they don't have this Meflecto system that makes the glasses more comfortable. However, this one does not have the Meflecto system and it is maybe the most comfortable pair of Persoles out there. Colored me conflicted. But a big reason why I think that they are comfortable is uh, it is metal and they do flex very easily so whenever they're on they're not really pushing any pressure here on the temples since it's a thinner metal running throughout it you know, there's no kind of thicker acetate trying to push pressure. It's actually very thin. And even though it doesn't have the Persol Meflecto, it still has the other Persol trademark, which is the Persol Arrow, starting right here, and then it continues over to the side of the frame. But since this is a metal frame uh, instead of an acetate frame, you do see the arrow kind of blend into the rest of the arm right there. And that metal arm continues to right here are the ear stocks, where you can see that it goes back to acetate. If you look at the ear stocks, it says Persol on one side of the frame, and it does not say Persol on the other side of the frame. I'm guessing just so Persol can show off how unique and Italian they are. Another interesting thing of note of the Persol ear stocks is if you look really closely here, you can see it has these uh, grooves right here on the inside, and I think that's kind of a design aesthetic, uh, but it actually helps whenever they're on the frame itself. It helps kind of the ears breathe a little bit and also helps grip to the back of the ears a little bit. So it's an interesting detail that I think pays off in both form and function. And also continuing with the idea of it being a calligrapher model, you can see right here along those lines it's these two very thin like written lines like it's actually done with the calligrapher's pen. Because Persol really likes their detail. And another small little bit of detail as we move inside the frames as you can see, yes, the arrow is on the outside, but it continues right here on the inside. So right there on the inside of the frame, you see the arrow on both sides of the lens. Double the arrows to double your fun. And then if you look right here, this metal bridge has uh, those same little bit of ingrooving lines that the sides of the frames have. If you look on the inside, you can see that it has adjustable nose pads right there. It's actually kind of a very interesting design running all the way from the lens to the nose bridge to the other lens with the uh, adjustable nose pads intact. And I have to say, it's actually very easy to adjust these nose pads to where you want. A lot of times, kind of as they're bolted onto metal frames, they kind of have to flex with inside that metal frame. But with this, they're bolted onto that nose pad design, so you have a much greater range of movement to adjust the nose pads to your face. I think it's the lightest Persol up until that point, and it only got replaced with the old metal 8649s. 7649s, my bad. Here's to looking at you, kid. Next, let's take a quick look at the packaging. Because if I wasn't sold initially on the glasses, I definitely was sold immediately on the packaging. Especially with the box. I mean, look at that. I really haven't seen any company go out and go, we're going to make a white box. A lot of time they kind of do matte black boxes, and they all kind of look... Uh, a little samey after a while, but Persol said, you know what, we really want this pair of sunglasses to stand out, especially with people who have a lot of sunglasses boxes, like me. Uh, and so they did an all-white box, and if you look at it like it's a piece of paper, you see these kind of uh, calligrapher kind of dash marks, which look handmade. I mean, obviously they're not, but they look like the at least the initial kind of doing of this design was done by someone with the calligrapher pen. And then on it, you see the Persol logo right there, and it says Calligrapher Edition, and of course, calligraphic writing. 
There we go, I nailed it. And then, of course, as you remove the box lid, you see the case right here. And the case of the calligrapher should look very familiar if you got the uh, 8649s, you know, except brown case instead of a black case. I think originally uh, these were brown case, but uh, I kind of sweet talked them in to make sure I got a black case with them instead. Because I can't have too much of the same thing because people might start thinking I have a problem. And then as you move on after the case, right here you have the Persol Clicker for pamphlet, which you know, which each of their new additions, they have their own unique pamphlet to them with an it just kind of goes over some of the fun kind of detailing and design aspects that went into making this frame. And of course, certificate of authenticity and stuff like that goes into these as well. And then after that, you just kind of have the standard Persol cleaning cloth right here, and then just the Luxotica pamphlet and the uh, uh, Persol certificate of authenticity right here. So a lot of kind of just standard stuff from uh, Persol packaging. Uh, what really just stands this out is actually the usage of white on the box and on the pamphlet than kind of anything else. But it does kind of make the box stand out look very different than anything else you might be having. So my final thoughts on the sunglasses themselves, I really like them. I kind of second guessed them initially and kind of didn't know how I felt, especially since it didn't have the reflective system. But uh, like I said, I you know started to really like them and then I got them and then I love them. I wear them, I kind of reach for them a lot whenever I just want to good persol that looks good and kind of stands out from the crowd a little bit more than some of my other persols. So final judgment is, uh, yeah, I like them and uh, you should probably like them too. They're stylish and they're comfortable and they're persol so you know they're, they're very well made and then like I said the persol lenses are out of this world yet again. But I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. Do you have a pair of Persol? If you do, uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Or if you have the calligraphers, or if you really think about getting the calligraphers, or another type of Persol, please, like I said, let me know in the comments down below. And also, if there's any other kind of sunglasses you want me to talk about here on this channel, as well as other luxury items, uh, I'm going to try and do some other kind of fashion and style tips outside of just sunglass reviews. And I also want to do uh, deeper dives in some other luxury related items to review. So if you have any ideas on that front, please comment below and let me know. And also don't forget, if you like this, please like this and share it to someone else who you think might like this. And if you want to watch more, you can click right here to subscribe or you can click right here to watch more. And uh, I'll see you later.